John Shagden, PCS Outdoors. Uh, we have Will Willie Colby uh, here today, and he is a traditional black ash uh, pet basket maker, and he also makes uh, creels, and these items are absolutely beautiful, and uh, we are very fortunate. Willie uh, used to work in our production area, and he's decided he's going to carry his passion on, and I met Willie after he was no longer working at PCS Outdoors and uh, at a show and uh, offered him to come in this winter and um, we're going to market his baskets and uh, today he's going to give you some history about uh, these items. It's truly a North American trade and very few craftsmen that uh, even come close to Willie and I'm very proud to have him here today. Um, after Willie gets done doing his presentation here, we own some land on the Asabo River and we're going to actually go in the woods and uh, show you a couple pictures of the actual pr uh, trees and roots and other items that he harvests to uh, make these beautiful items. Uh, the other stuff against the wall is just a display in our main lobby entrance. Um, we like to have a nice traditional uh, atmosphere when people come into our office office uh, but anyways here's Willie and I'll let him uh, take over hi first of all I'd like to uh, give a little explanation of black ash splint and the tradition of, uh, of weaving with it um, black ash is what's called ring porous it's a ash tree Fraxinum niger that grows in the swamps in northeastern Michigan and it's about the only tree that the growth rings will come apart. So each growth ring comes apart in a strip when compacted, pounded. And I'll take a full log, 10 foot log, and I'll make great big cut strips like this that I remove from the log. Each one of these is a single growth ring. And because we're going with the, the grain, it has a huge tinsel strength many hundreds of pounds and that's why they used it in backpacks throughout history um, because you can carry huge loads and uh, not stress the basket and when woven tightly it becomes uh, very rigid enough so that it will withstand uh, even me there we go um, I like to use that practice now a practical uh, trapper's basket would be this one. Different yeah. roots have uh, different strength. This is elm root. It's a lateral root. Lateral roots grow in certain soils. And it's a matter of being able to find the right soil type. This is an elm root. Very unusual. Very rare. Get the Cambrian off it. Because of the cell structure, is extremely tough and durable and I'll use that for lashing and the center root itself I can use for rims and handles I've had uh, up to 30 feet roots that I found at Benel the Strip I'm the only one I've found that's using this material a traditional fly fishing creel for the northeast for the last couple hundred years has been made with uh, black or brown ash this is a fairly typical typical fly fishing creel usually the tops are cedar it's fairly traditional this one's mahogany and of course the traditional fly fishing harness I think if I have other materials here. Um, I do backpacks in all different sizes. This is a junior size, grandkid backpack. Oh, anything else of interest? Oh, this is a splint. As I was showing you off a, a longer log, this is fairly typical black ash splint which will split again if it's thick enough, as this one is. It can be peeled back and you get the satin. Pretty traditional in any uh, 
basket made before the 30s up in this area or any in northeastern United States. There'd be somebody around that could process this material. And even when it's ribbon thin like this, it still has huge strength. Thank you. I think earlier I did some uh, explanation of black ash gathering, as I have it all over the floor here. <laughs> black ash plant. Um, I think maybe now I'll, then I'll introduce the, this pack basket. Each of my baskets of any kind, but especially pack baskets, are unique. I uh, give each one its own personal history. My artist statement is pretty much that every basket's a journey and everyone's a new one. Um, they all mean something personal to me. This one has, all my backpacks have eyes. My eyes have your back, I like to say. Um, I used to throw the knots away and then one day I noticed that they make great ornamentation. And then this one especially, I have small sets of eyes on the sides. So all three sides of your back are covered. <laughs> Just worry about going forward. Uh, it, it's made up of a number of things. Um, elm root, split lateral elm root for rim. Red osier out of the ditch uh, for center rip, lashed with black ash. Um, black ash. That's the Cambrian, the, the sheathing of the uh, elm root that I used. Um, jack pine root, elm root, white pine root, cedar roots split and laced around the eyes. Um, more white ash, um, elm root. Age black ash, that's the darker stuff. Um, cedar bark, the inside. Uh, twisted elm root. White pine root. More elm root. A red phase, a rare red phase of uh, black ash splint that I found. More white pine. Um, more black ash. All the way through. Um, aromatic cedar runners. And full leather harness. For some reason, I decided to call this one the shaman. I guess because of the eyes. John Shagnon and Willie Colby, PCS Outdoors. Uh, we're out on a Saturday on the Asabo River. Um, we're going to walk back into a bayou back here um, off of the Asabo, the dead Asabo, in search of material for a black ash pack basket. Let's do some weaving.